Hey guys, what's going on? It's Adam here from Adam Stevens Bass. Uh, recently, uh, not this weekend that just passed, but the weekend before, uh, I had an awesome, awesome opportunity uh, to see one of my favorite bass players and bass teachers, educators, um, pretty much in the entire world. His name is Anthony Wellington. Uh, some of you might know him. Uh, he's mostly known for playing bass in Victor Wooten's band, but he's in his own right, incredible, incredible musician, huge beast, and most importantly, he's a really good teacher. He put on an awesome clinic. Um, so the purpose of this video, I've kind of had this this topic on my mind uh, ever since the clinic happened in order to do a sort of a bass lesson slash talking type video for you guys, just to sort of maybe, like, obviously I'm not going to just say what he said in the clinic, but I'm going to just sort of try to relay to you guys uh, one specific exercise that really stood out to me that he talked about and he demonstrated in the clinic and um, I know there's some videos of Anthony like on YouTube already from Groove Workshop and a few other things of him showing you know his crazy slap stuff and everything but this is one exercise I never really saw like anywhere on the internet and I've never heard anyone talk about it really and he demonstrated it and it, it stuck with me and I've been using it a lot the past few days just to practice with so like I said I thought I'd share it with you guys so enough of me blabbing let's, uh, let's jump right into the exercise. Essentially the, uh, the preface for this exercise was essentially uh, a question from someone in the audience just uh, Regarding, you know, learning the notes on the bass and to the extent of like, not just like, oh yeah, I know how to play a C major scale, but like, do you really, really know how to play a C major scale? Can you play it all around the bass on any set of strings, sort of in any position, and most importantly in context um, with, you know, harmony or groove or some sort of musical way of playing it? So, um, essentially, Anthony's way of answering with uh, this, this question that was asked was uh, just kind of showing a little example. So what he did, he actually just, um, before he started talking about it, he just, he had his loop station there. He laid in this little loop and he basically just played a C major 7 and then a D minor 7, an E minor 7, and then a D minor 7 again. So it's just all diatonic to the key of C, and obviously he chose the key of C because there's no sharps, no flats, it's a really easy key kind of for comparison purposes and just to kind of get started if you've never done anything like this before. So I'm going to do a heated, now, now I'm going to make a little bass loop out of those three chords. <laughs> got the three chords going on now and basically what Anthony said to do now is so I'm gonna turn this down for a sec just while I'm while I'm talking all right so basically what Anthony said to do now there's there's loads of possibilities basically we're gonna take the G string and the D string and we're gonna play six note groupings in that C major scale so if we have a six note shape starting on the D string using three notes in the D and three notes on the G string, but using the notes diatonic to the C major scale, we would get an E, F, G, A, B, and C again, okay? Now, you notice that each of those three notes, we went up, and then we went up again, okay? So once we take that six note grouping, Instead of starting on E, which is kind of outlining like an E Phrygian sound, now we're going to start on F. So now we get sort of a Lydian sound. Okay? And then on G, we get like a G mix of Lydian. I'll turn back up the loop now. And then on A, we get like an A Aeolian. B Locrian, C Ionian, D Dorian, and then we end up back on E Phrygian again. And then you can keep going, F Lydian. So we're basically just taking these little shapes. And why this is very important is because all this sort of melodic information we really want to get inside of our fingers, inside of our ears, and we want to get unconscious, okay? So the cool part that Anthony started talking about now is. He, he broke this down uh, more rhythmically. So now that I got kind of got the notes out of the way for you guys, I'm going to take that same sequence of three notes per string, always ascending and then moving up to the next shape. 
But now I'm going to play it in triplets along with this track. So triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. And now I'm gonna go back down, same thing. It's a little sloppy. If I were to do it again, maybe I'd do the loop just a bit slower just so I could really nail all of those all those triplet phrases. But Hopefully you guys are kind of starting to get the idea now. So we're basically hearing how all these notes sound over all the chords. We're getting, like we're, we're basically practicing everything. We're practicing our time, we're practicing our scales, we're practicing phrasing. We're getting all these melodic ideas sort of into our ear. It's a, it's a seriously incredible exercise. So now, once we kind of get that under our figures, he went even further, obviously, because he's Anthony Wellington and he's a crazy madman. I'm just kidding, he's awesome. Um, but essentially the next part he started talking about was, not only can you do this on two strings, but you can do it on three strings. So you can group the scales in, in uh, three string groupings or even in four string groupings. Um, instead of doing it on the top two strings, you can do it on the middle two strings, you can do it on the bottom two strings. There's loads and loads and loads of possibilities. And now the next cool part is all of this, by the way, was just in the key of C, okay? And by the way, there's lots of really cool variations you can do on this little uh, six note grouping. So there, that little example I showed you guys, the example Anthony showed, showed us at the clinic, was all ascending, right? But then he went on and said you can take all these different variations. So you can go ascending and then descending. And you want all this sort of melodic vocabulary really into your playing, like, like, like he said. And then, for instance, you could go descending, descending. I'll put the loop back on. Etc. You can do uh, descending, ascending. So guys, clearly there's like literally hours, hours, days, weeks of material uh, to practice here and um, I hope this sort of gives you guys a little bit of an introduction um, as to kind of uh, a glimpse, I guess, into Anthony's brain. This isn't really my idea. I'm going to steal it from him because it's an awesome idea, but basically the way Anthony attacks the bass is, is almost very, I don't want to say systematic, but he's really, really got a good way of sort of attacking and making sure every single phrase, every note on the bass, every shape, every position on the bass that he's extremely, extremely familiar with. And by the way, while he was doing this, he was kind of talking and just, he, he, he made it obvious how effortless he could do all this stuff. And that was ultimately the biggest thing that stuck with me. Because you guys can probably tell when I'm doing this, I'm really kind of like, I still have to sort of think about it. It's not completely unconscious. And he's got his four stages of, of sort of consciousness and of knowing as a musician. and. Um, essentially, the, the goal is to get it to that fourth stage that he talks about, which is basically like it's, it's so under your fingers that you can talk, that you can watch, you know, basketball or NFL or hockey, whatever you're doing, and you can just play it, you know, totally effortlessly. And then when you play in context of like a solo or something, then it really sounds, you know, super musical and effortless. And I, I think that's ultimately how, how the good cats get to get to sound so good because it's not hard for them. It is super easy. So this is a huge eye opener for me. And uh, the last sort of thing in this lesson I'll leave you guys with is that this is all, by the way, just in the key of C. So he recommends, and I would definitely recommend practicing in all 12 keys, okay? So if you go through the circle of fifths, that was in the key of C. So then you could go to the key of G. So you basically lay down your one chord, two chord, three chord, two chord, Loop that, and then just start shedding in G major. And then once you're done that, once you're feeling good about that, then you can move on to different keys. And all of these little, you know, six note grouping triplet things or whatever can apply to every single key. So like I said, there's like loads and loads of material here. And uh, just witnessing that has, has kept me inspired. So I hope this lesson wasn't too much blabbing and blah, 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 blah. And I hope I really, you know, kind of got right into the, the knit and grit of, of this lesson. And most importantly, I hope I kind of, 
parlayed uh, the stuff I learned from Anthony's awesome clinic here in Toronto. I hope you guys kind of learned something from it too now that I've, I've shared that with you. So like always, if this lesson helped, don't hesitate. Subscribe to my channel for more covers, lessons, live concert footage, bass, loop versions, solo bass arrangements, loads of fun stuff. So uh, thanks a lot for watching. I hope to see you back here soon, guys. Peace out.